Sean Strickland as UFC champion. What does that look like? <laughs> Guys, this is awesome. It really is. This is really awesome. Now, Ed, Ed Soros' partner, George, let the cat out of the bag. He said that a deal has been reached. It's done. Piera versus Strickland is the number one contenders fight. And you know what, guys? It should be. Of course it should be. Of course. It, there was one more that you could have looked at, which was Marvin Vittori versus Robert Whitaker. But Vittori and Whitaker have the same two problems, which is they've not only fought Adesanya, they fought him twice. Now, I, if Cannoneer gets in there, we're having a whole different conversation. Cannoneer gets in there. As a matter of fact, I think you're all just going to have to wait because it likely means that Cannoneer knocked Adesanya out. It's going to be this dramatic fashion. They're going to go and, and rematch that one. But I share for you that if you are looking for iron on top of iron, you got to look a little bit close. Like, I'm really happy that this is happening for Piera. I think maybe that's why I'm bringing you this story, guys. I think because I love the precedent being set. Piera was a champion. I believe a world champion. I believe in kickboxing. Allegedly, he knocked out Izzy Adesanya. I and mean, I've got to word it that way because nobody's ever seen this tape but they both tell us that it's real. And I don't say that as an actual way to question that. I say that to share for you guys that this isn't all that big of a deal. So what? He knocked him out in kickboxing. It means absolutely nothing. Nobody watches kickboxing. These are two huge guys. We, we haven't seen the tape. Can we admit that? And some of you smart marks that are wanting to go, to Chael, I most certainly have, and I'm more ahead of this than you. And I don't think you have. I think you saw a clip. I, I don't think you've seen the tape. I don't think you saw those guys walk out. I don't think you heard the announcement. I don't think you saw him check on Izzy. I don't think you saw him raise Pierre's hand. I just don't, I don't think you've seen that. I don't even think you could tell me the organization it was. I think if I told you that took place in Bellator kickboxing, you'd go, really? I didn't know it was over. And I assumed it was glory. And then I would come back and go, it was K1. Or then we find out it was at the dog park, right? The dog park next to my house for all that it matters. It's one of these small things, but it matters to Adesanya. And it's an incredible story. I fully support Piera being able to get this fast track to a title shot, but I also think we got to give that a real good look because there's another guy. There's another guy floating around, doesn't have a whole bunch of fights, but he's got one hell of a reputation. There's another guy that's being told, no, 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 you've got to do more. You've got to lift more. You need more time. But he's whipped a lot of ass. And you know I'm talking about Chimaya. So it's an interesting position. Conor McGregor was ready for a world title fight, and he proved that in 11 seconds the day he finally got a world title fight. Matter of fact, he proved that months before when he won an interim championship. Matter of fact, he reproved it at Madison Square Garden eight months later when he won a third world championship. Now, I'm only bringing to you that you don't know when a guy's ready. You just don't. That's just something you say. I want to bring the guy along. I want to bring him along slow. I have a plan. I have a strategy. I mean, these are just, these are things that you say. You don't know when the guy's ready. He doesn't know when he's ready. Nobody knows. You got, you got to do the fight that you can do when you can do it. You got to win the fight that you can win when you can win it. And that's a very important philosophy. Like I had to grow up on that. That's a little bit of Ron Finley in me speaking right there. That was the head coach of the University of Oregon, but guys were given a red shirt year. You elect to take a red shirt year. And sometimes you need that guy. That guy that's planning to stay on ice, that you need him right now. And Finley would say that you got to win the matches you can win when you can win them. Don't put a guy that can get his hand raised off for 12 months. Don't do it. If he can get the, get the blue ribbon right now, put his ass out there right now. I only share that because I, I love the idea. Of course, of course, Sean Strickland, for goodness sakes, I think Sean Strickland could have stood up and butted heads and taken this opportunity away from Cannoneer, which, by the way, I got to change a little something on my tone. I can't remember the last time I said anything nice about Jared Cannonier. And I swear to goodness to you guys that listen to me all the time, I have never meant to say anything bad. I just always put a little spice on it, don't I? Well, Jared Cannonier became a number one contender in a fight that he didn't win a single round in. Like, that stuff's true. Jared Cannonier is a stud. And by the way, I met him. He could have been a nicer guy to me. You know, he's getting this opportunity because he's such a nice guy. I love this part of the story, and I, I feel as though Dana and company don't see the promotional side of this, and so they're almost burying it, but I, I just, I want to bring it back. Jared Cannonier ran, shows up to a UFC by himself. You get two tickets when you're a guest of the UFC. He shows up. He didn't have a date. So he goes over to the seat that they tell him to sit in. He happens to be next to Adesanya. So Adesanya sees him come up. Oh, great. 
I'm going to have to put up with this crap. Guy within the vision. I'm going to have to put up with this all night long. Cannoneer's a great guy to him. They end up being each other's company because Adesanya was solo as well. Now, now they're buddies. Now I said, hey, I'm getting a, I'm getting a soft drink. Uh, Jared, you want one? I'll be right back. Right? It's one of these situations. They end up being friends. Adesanya comes out the back end of it. Media, of course, goes and asks about it. Hey, heard you with Jared Cannonier all night. Bet he was in your ear. I said, man, it was just the opposite. And you know what? I'm going to fight that guy. I'm going to fight that guy because if I have an opportunity, I'm going to give it to somebody I like. I'm going to give it to Jared Cannonier. And he did. He did. Nobody controls their career in the history of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Nobody. As well as Izzy Adesanya. Israel Adesanya has picked every opponent that he has had since Robert Whitaker. And I was there and watched it. This is the night that he, as, as he, he defends the interim title. You guys remember that? It's one of the great lines of Izzy Adesanya. Another great line that he didn't get credit for. Israel Adesanya, the night he fights Robert Whitaker in Australia, the first time, 57,000 live people. Izzy was the interim champion. Don't forget that. So when Izzy wins the, the Undisputed Championship and he's got the two belts, he pops up on the, on the desk of Sports Center and he tells us he is not now the Undisputed. He did not win an Undisputed Championship. He defended an interim championship. He is now a two-time interim champion, which I just loved. But by the way, before he got to Sports Center, he was still down in the octagon. Robert Whitaker is being exited out stage left. And Izzy turns his attention in front of a live viewing audience and 57,000 in attendance and puts it right on Paulo Costa. I mean, this guy has controlled his career, got Yoel Romero off of a loss. 40 plus years old, coming off of a loss. He wants him, he got him. Now he wants to do Cannoneer a solid because the, the guy was nice to him. Over a couple soft drinks and a couple of nachos. I don't hate that story. I get where that is anti-climatic in the world of fight promotion, but it is unique. Everything Adesanya does is unique. And I do want to go back to something I was saying. I don't mean to be negative about Jared at all. Jared is a straight-up stud. And by the way, I met he was a real gentleman. And I don't know that I've ever said anything bad about him, but I do notice I don't say anything good. I don't say anything good, but I've always been attempting to prove a different point. I think I just want, I think I would just want you guys to know that. For whatever reason, it makes it, I I need to have said that because when you do go back to Sean Strickland, he did have a very legitimate argument to be fighting for the championship right now. Now it's not going to happen, but if he gets the win over Piera, that's going to be eight in a row. And if I'm wrong, that's going to be nine in a row for Sean Strickland, completely undefeated within this weight class. Well, if you juxtapose that and all the years that it took him to get there against Piera's, these aren't even close. Piera's had two fights. Pierre is going to be a main card at a sold-out T-Mobile Arena? What? On his third fight? Pierre is going to be fighting on pay-per-view on International Fight Week in his third fight? What? Piera is in a number one contenders match. His third time ever come to the UFC. Oh, and by the way, he's got the power of Ed and George, and he's got a co-signing by Glover Teixeira saying he is the right guy. He is ready now. Put him in there with Adesanya. You got to listen to that stuff. Our industry always knows. You, you'll fool the guys in the rankings. I mean, you'll fool those guys for years. You will never fool the locker room. You could put all the fighters in a room together, and they don't have to work out. They don't have to touch. You put them in a room together. One hour later, we will all know who the leader of that room is. Just like the animal kingdom. We will have our way, but we will know. And we'll be right. We'll be right. And every now and then, you want to know what a great fight is? Is when both guys are certain it's them. And that, I believe, is where Piera and Sean Strickland are. And not for nothing, if you're Team Piera, you have a rung to hang your hat on. Because Sean Strickland is going to go out and kickbox him. For sure. He'll do some wrestling. He'll mix in everything he's got. It's Sean Strickland. You're not scared of anything. But he's going to give you what you want. There's going to be no double cross. There's going to be no go back to 1993 and you got a striker versus a wrestler and one guy's laying on top of the other. This is not what Strickland does. And I don't think he needs to, by the way. I think Strickland's good enough to kickbox with him. I think Strickland's good enough to beat him. And I understand this goes both ways. We'll get predictions as that gets a little bit closer. 
But I do think if you just want to look at that and you want to look at the fact that Sean Strickland could be two wins away from being the face of a division for the Ultimate Fighting Championship, that is very interesting. Can we all agree on that? At a minimum, that is very interesting. You're going to have to put a muzzle on this guy at time. You're going to sit him down with some PR trade. Like, there's some things that are going to need to take place. And I think that the other part of the story that Piera, only two fights, his third fight will be a number one contender's fight, which would mean it with success, his fourth fight is for the world championship, of which he just might win. I like that precedent. I see nothing wrong with that. And I do think as we start to look at that, we do then need to start to look back at Chemayev. And there'll be somebody else in a few months. Rachmanov's in there right now. There'll be somebody else. But if that is going to be our new policy and reputation starts to matter, and it should, I personally am all for it. 